as you can see, it's a really diverse group with us on the panel, which straight away breaks any stereotype one sees in popular media about Keralaites and their professions of choice. And I'm very excited to introduce them all to you. I'll start in alphabetical order. It's Anjali first, Anjali Korean. Anjali Uttap Korean. She is a singer and a very popular radio jockey with Radio Mango and a newspaper columnist also. She mm -hmm. grew up in Calcutta in a multicultural home that was steeped in the arts mm -hmm. and now calls Kochi mm -hmm. her home. Mm -hmm. And she yeah. pursues a mission that is far removed from her obvious identity tied to her mother. And Anjali now with the Kidney Warriors Foundation and the Sunny Kidney Foundation focuses on creating awareness about kidney transplants and helping people with kidney disease live a far better quality of life than they otherwise would have. Welcome, Manjali. Thank you Krishna, so much. Krishna, Krishna Chandra, the only uh, male member among our panelists, Krishna Chandra Nair. He's an animation filmmaker and an actor. I've watched your movie and he is now based in Indore. A graduate of NID Ahmedabad, he did his master's in animation in France and has directed numerous short films, Chandra's Cafe, For the Love of God, Pitting Pudum, and Funny Fish, which has won 12 awards and 96 nominations worldwide. Amazing, really. Currently, Krishna, along with his work in feature films and ads, is working on developing original animated Indian content. He is a creative brain behind the very humorous, and insightful humans of Tengakola. You must see that. A series of short stories that are an exaggerated version of the people and the life he saw around him while growing up in Kerala. Lakshmi Menon, a designer by training and profession, runs the organization Pure Living in Kochi. It is dedicated to finding suitable living solutions, uh, livelihood solutions, and also in propagating awareness in society about the importance of green living. This organization focuses on using simple and impactful ideas to engage and empower the underprivileged. Lakshmi conceptualized Amuma Tiri, or Wixdom, a project designed to provide livelihood for elderly women living in old age homes and orphanages across the state. She's also known for Pen With Love, the plantable pens made of paper with seeds that grow into trees, and Shaya, a bed roll created from scrap that accumulates while making personal protective equipment. Welcome, Lakshmi. And our last panelist is Lata, Lata Kurian Raji. And she is a lady with many, many, many interests. She's a filmmaker. She has produced three Malayalam movies under her banner, A Blue Mermaid Picture Company, and her main production, Jala Marmaram, a story about disregarding the pollution of Kerala's pristine water lifelines is told from a child's point of view. And this movie won the national award for best feature film on environment. Lata is also an art curator, a curator of Leela Bazaar, a fine craft exhibition showcasing traditional and contemporary Indian craft and design. She's the owner of the Gallery 360, a gallery based in Trivandrum, and is also an art and drama teacher. She's currently based in Kerala. Thank you all for being here. Welcome. It is really a pleasure to have you all. And uh, Savita started off on the idea behind how this panel came to be about stereotypes and Malaya Malayalis who choose particular professions. That is how they are seen. Now, I spoke to all of you about it and you had such you know, such diverse views on this. Would you like to comment about this? Anjali, shall we start with you? What do you think about these stereotypes? Well, actually, I come from a home where there are no stereotypes. Okay, uh -huh. so it's uh, very different for me. I come from a home, first of all, which maybe 49 years ago, it was unheard of probably, or maybe it was heard about, you know, two different backgrounds socially and, of course, uh, religiously. So I have, you know, the Syrian Christian blood in me caught in and the other side there is this Tamilian Brahmin aspect to my life because of my mother. I grew up in a household which had a mother who was working full time and I, my best friend Pia, her mom was a teacher and this is when I was four years old but Pia's grandmother, Mama, was also a teacher. 
that was how many years ago was she a working woman so i mm-hmm. never really thought of uh, anything odd about it in fact i rather felt would have probably felt odd when i didn't have something to do or i didn't have a job and i think uh, in kerala especially i think there are a lot of women who are the sole breadwinners of the nurses so i'm not talking about the gulf but hey so many nurses all over the world are empowered and most of them are from kerala and secondly i think the breadwinners in this particular part of the world are women who go to work and what are the kind of jobs they do if you go way back they were the people who came to your house to cook for you they were the chedtis or the nannies who came to look after you just after you had childbirth and they went home with the money to look after their entire family Whether so there is no one type of malayali working woman no. or working and man as we see no. but the stereotype krishna had something very interesting to say and um, uh, i think it was lata who said the same thing about um kerala's being a little laid back and maybe you know not talking enough about themselves krishna do you remember that conversation we had and how we sort of yeah. contributes to this would you like to uh, you know tell us all of that i actually your type i mean this in the case uh, earlier because like when i um, reached nid in amdavad there was like a mixed pot of different cultures happening there and then i also had my share of you know like judging people based on the stereotypes and i was also being judged uh, by people uh, based on the uh, kerala stereotypes and i used to get really offended but then i have learned that you know like over time that it it comes from a place of ignorance and i you you know you it, it's not really entirely their fault either so i have learned to let go i even use the stereotypes in my films i my graduation film uh, in fact was about uh, it's called chandran's cafe it was about a malayali man who runs a chai kada on the moon so <laughs> it's like <laughs> based on the the saying that that we have so most people took it like light, light heartedly uh, except for i remember um, some one person i knew uh took offense to it saying this is not what we do you know what all of us do and i, I i'm like i know i'm a malayali <laughs> you know no I harm in poking a little bit of fun at ourselves right <laughs> yeah just laugh it's okay to laugh at ourselves a little bit it's okay so i um, yeah i mean then i realized you know like it's about the intent right like it's not my point of the film was not to poke fun at it like it was just using that to just like play with it and then it was telling another story entirely and it was talking about something else so i mean i am i'm i'm not on board with uh, somebody using that to bully you know another person like or another community like that is probably not cool but yeah i mean like in the end like i guess i, I it's it's a, it's a opportunity to you know conversation like Break conversation this. About, yeah. yeah you know both lakshmi and lata they said something that uh, you know that struck me as being a very typical south indian trait that we contribute to the stereotype in a way because we don't talk about what we do um lakshmi you remember we were talking about that how modesty is very much a part of the south indian so Lakshmi, your views. No, I said you know we are a bunch of uh, laid back people, uh, like somebody rightly put, uh, but mostly very well read with very clear political uh, ideas and conscious intellect intellectuals, um, and we love music and movies, uh, but at the same time we are addicted to booze and beef. and celebrate the hartals and strikes and like any other state you know you should see the long queues in front of the Bev- beverages corporation the 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 uh, day they announced uh, hartals and uh, but yet we produced a few um, uh, forbes listed entrepreneurs as well you know just like i think kerala is just like the uh, uh, the the kathakali itself you know a, a very elaborate torso and yet at the same time very simple skirt that it has 
uh, or like the avial that we have or the or the ginger pickle you know it is sweet tangy spicy at the same time so it's a very good uh, beautiful combination of all these and uh, we are extremely proud of the social indicators uh, that are very, very unique to our state and i think that gives us a little bit of you know uh, uh, kind of egoistic and also judgmental at times <laughs> no, but that's a beautiful way of putting it you know comparing the kathakali the elaborateness of it yet with the very uh, simple skirt and the simplicity that underlies that uh, lata you made a very interesting comment when we were talking about stereotypes you were saying yes gulf malayali yes nurses but so what so uh, you know i really want uh, that point of view to come across can you tell you know our listeners about that a little bit more about that i think uh, we can just you know continue with the whole idea of malayalis being extremely modest and uh, we have exceptional exceptional people coming from kerala and uh, we we just don't talk about the things that we do and we don't go around uh, publishing that this is what we do and we just do it i mean things we are more doers and um i think the stereotypes i've never thought of it we've just made fun of it i mean it's like a in house joke all of us make fun of you know gelf nurse and gelfi and you know those sort of things we we say it between ourselves it's like making fun of our own siblings but if somebody were to say something about our own sibling or somebody from kerala being the stereotype this or that i think we'd all get terribly heckled and um i i you know it only after i had a conversation with savita that this came out you know that oh there is a what do you call it um, stereotype that all malayalis are put in because um, i've never thought of it that way i think it's just simply because we don't talk about these things it's it's nice to have all this representation here on this panel and i'm going to move on now because it, it is obvious you know from everything that the stereotype only comes from popular media and there's nothing more to it than that and in our conversation that we had it was really nice when you were telling me about your early influences the early influences in your life and how they shaped who you are and what you are now in so many different ways actually i'm going to start with you you were talking about intergenerational family influences mm-hmm. i'd love to know a little bit more about that uh yeah um i am i belong to an agrarian family and a very close knit group uh, right now i'm staying with my mom and my grandma and uh, she was there with me for the last 25 years so uh, i've been i've, I've learned, i mean drawn so much of inspiration from her Every, i think most of the initiative that i do is completely you know uh, connected to with her uh, uh, the kind of habits that she uh, carries around and the the teachings from her and also my father you know um, i think um, uh, the way he had explained what life is and the way he has uh, the way uh, i mean he was in into too many things like he was uh, with the rubber board yet he was with the uh, kalakshetra one day the lalit kala academy the other day with the movie star, you know uh, said the other day and he used to kind of elaborate what um, uh, what the fun that he had the experience that he had so all this was really kind of help me in you know shaping what i am and also being from an agrarian family i think the connect that we have with nature you know i think is slightly more than uh, from any other field and uh, i think that uh, also prompted me to bring in the ecological uh, values in whatever that i do and being a lover of nature i think invariably we have an eye for a uh, more eye for detail and also we get excited in small things and we tend to find gold god in small things so as you can see the every initiative of mine you know the, the little amumathiri or the chekutti doll or the pen it's all kind of very simple ideas but uh, which is easily related to people you know a larger community um so it, and uh, the kind of exposure like i said that i got from a very young stage um to to various uh, areas of interest those those are the things that really uh, shaped me you uh, know into what i am now this exposure you talk about it's so interesting because you know being part of this uh, being such a diverse group 
this exposure the, uh, that family has contributed is a common thread that ties all of you krishna you were talking about your father about yeah. um, tell us i'm not going to say anything <laughs> tell us about that no uh, my my family uh, so right from like when he was really young he used to copy those uh, drawings from manorama uh, magazines and uh, namboodri artist namboodri's drawings and everything so he used to have that inclination towards art so before even i could i think maybe because of the lack of uh, opportunities more than opportunities but lack of awareness towards art as a profession like maybe like you know uh, none of these artists in the family ended up doing it as a profession so to overcompensate for it i guess when i started first scribbling my father apparently got me my first set of crayons even before i i could remember so there was that kind of support always from the family uh but i don't know if anyone thought i'd do it professionally until like i realized in around when i was around at around 10th standard uh, that i could you know do animation for a living and uh, mm-hmm. again my sole idea of doing that was to you know draw for my life <laughs> that's all uh, that i knew about it but then later once i came to nid i realized that it's design and animation it's not just about drawing it is more to it like this i fell in love with storytelling and and that's something that even during my english classes i remember i used to look forward to each new story and i used to sit and uh, draw uh, like visualize these stories by the side of the textbooks so like i always had that love for uh, stories from even then but now that is like what uh, i do for a living and yeah <laughs> it's so amazing krishna that your uh, family encouraged you to doing something very different and uh, mm-hmm. you know that's really fortunate because not a lot of children even today have that privilege um yeah. anjali tell us about traveling with your mother those little stage shows in small towns and the um, it, and how you also broke away from this image this very very strong very popular image that your mother had to chart your own path of course her influences were there of course and uh, you know talking about my childhood and talking about traveling with my mother i have to say since krishna was talking about crayons and things like that i think my brother and me never ever bought a label to be put on to our books our labels were all cut out and made by my mother she would draw them she actually went to jj school of arts for a short time she's very artistic she paints really beautifully and some of the paintings in the house were done by her she would stitch our salwar kameezes uh, my clothes and everything like that if i didn't have something to wear she quickly stitch it and then she say otherwise just wear a kanjivaram and go karna there's no reason to do anything else so from age 15 i was wearing kanjivaram and people were wearing other things but she really had this way of even return gifts and everything was made by her the bags were made with jute she would paint on them she would write on them and things like that and then everyone thought oh my god usha utsuk's daughter and i'm going for a show with her and i'm going to get the front seat let me tell you till now i've not gone abroad on any show with my mother she never took me but i did go to para shows that are shows that were done in localities you know just in the middle of a field in some village in calcutta and uh, the glamour and the glitz of my mother when she comes on stage and she starts singing ramba ho or she does, does the ganesh vandana or something like that is fabulous but i would be sitting in the base bin and when you were sitting in these para shows it's just a, like a little hole that has been dug in and you're sitting in that with all these pranis and poochies all you know and i still remember the show that amma did and she was singing over there larger than life and it was there was suddenly uh, like a swarm of locusts that hit that area and my mother is terrified terrified of any kind of flying animal bird insect anything okay and i still remember how that one of the locusts actually you know came and hit her face and i know that terror that was faced by her at that moment and that small little village can you imagine had one thing that they had a little sheet drop which was actually a net because they were expecting a locust uh, swarm coming to them but i just remember how my mother just stood there and she still sang because she believed the show must go on show must go on and then of course you being usha's daughter we didn't i didn't know that for a long time that my mother was a famous singer 
and i've said this story a million times till sunny and me were once going on kamak street and there's this big hoarding and we saw amma's photograph there a uh, big poster and normally only like really important people who are dead their photographs were put up on that so we looked at each other on the way back from school and said did amma die <laughs> and yeah, sometimes the like, children grow up not knowing, you know, how yeah, big. We had a very simple home, and I mean, yeah. very, you know, Amma was kept everything very simple, though very classy, and though lots of firsts that I'd, I've seen, what people have today, I've seen like forty years ago because of Amma and Appa mm-hmm. and the style that they had. Then Sunny said, "No, written over there something Usha sings for La Martinia. That's the name of our school." So we went home and we asked her, "Are you singing? Are you a singer?" and she said yes darling i am a singer <laughs> you know <laughs> so and uh, of course you know i- even in um, uh, it's difficult to break down break away from that mold i realized i do not have the uh, dumb to be a singer like able to sing for audience and then i remember in shambukananda hall in bombay there were two three guys sitting behind me and they were wow, what is this woman going to sing and literally tearing my mother down literally and as a child that made a huge impression on me and by the end of the show these people had been converted into usha fans from being usha haters you know and that's great yeah, it's a so lot that, to learn from lots to learn from but i also do believe that if you don't do anything with your inheritance you are really creating a horrible space in this world it's blasphemy as far as i'm concerned even in the bible jazib spear talks about claiming your territory so i was so blessed to have a mother and have a mother who had this platform and by birth i was on that platform just by being her daughter so i had to claim my territory and i had to take my inheritance forward i whether it was cooking good food at home whether it was keeping an impeccable house raising my children doing the duties that i have to do becoming a radio jockey that also by chance because she just gave me this job she said mm-hmm. go do this job and then of course being a person who now talks about kidney liver and pancreatic diseases i also support cancer projects uh, why did i do it because i knew that my name could take me somewhere i knew and i've been a radio jockey for 26 years it's the first job yes. i ever had yes. and i've been an mc um anjali i'm going to sorry i'm going to stop you here and move on to lata yeah, sure. because i'd like to hear her story i'd like all of us to hear her story also and um, it's amazing what you do with the kidney warriors foundation and the sunny kidney foundation and the influencers and all of that Thank and uh, as i was speaking to all of you i was just thinking all of you need a one hour show to yourselves but <laughs> unfortunately we don't have that so i am going to move on to uh, lata yeah. lata please tell us all about the subconscious learning effect that happens when your parents are interested in showing and teaching you things that fall far outside your daily experiences um yeah it's my dad um we studied in bangalore we were in boarding school in bangalore growing up and um so dad would drive up from trivandrum to bangalore and uh, every time he loved driving he loved traveling so every you know, we, we realized that on the way up or on the way back you know the route was different we weren't seeing the same uh, territory or the same buildings or temples or whatever that we see on the way and um, it was only years later like i told you that my mom told me that you know dad had this worn out map and he my mom was his navigator and they would check out the map and take the route which my father felt was the best and would drive you know along that was living in town some you know either at trichy or salem or somewhere you know so that was the way we would travel and along the way what dad would do was because there were two of us this was before my little sister was born and after she was born little baby she wasn't much of a problem but the two of us were because we were just like when have we reached have we reached have we reached so it was like you know all the time have we reached so my dad used to keep us entertained with everything on the road so if it was a milestone he would tell us to check out the milestone and see look that's 1 by 4 that's 1 by whatever you know all those things and he says that is how it makes a mile so you observe that or when we go you know we see a uh, 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 you know tamil nadu transport bus and he said not just the license plate look at the the number that you see on the top at the back of the bus he says that is that tells you from which area it is from and uh, you know uh, the number tells you which year it was you know put out on the road like as though it made any sense to us 
So there were a lot of things that my dad would show us along the way, you know. And somehow, then it really didn't make much sense. But years later, what it did was, over time, it made us observe things. We were looking at things. We were, you know, in our we were critically evaluating things in our mind. So we we didn't let anything go. So if we wanted to find something out, we would, you know, just look at it and just with all those little things, you know, the dad clues that dad had given us. We figure, you know, we try and figure things out, and I think that's also the best way to teach children, not mm -hmm. just out of a textbook, but out you know, the entire world is a textbook. That's what Dad would tell me. You know, the entire world. Just look around. The entire world is a textbook, and it doesn't have to be a textbook. It teaches you so much, and that way we learn so much about nature. Like Lakshmi was saying, you know, there's so much about nature that we learned along the way about respecting. So when we'd go, he wouldn't let us throw things out of the car. We had to keep things in the car. There was no throwing outside, and um, even little things like you know our petrol bill, the little you know yellow things. My dad would collect it, and I'd say, Dad, throw it away. He'd say, No, no, no. I can take it to the estate, and we'll have some. You know, we can work on the. You know, I can work on some. Uh, what is it? Um, you know, some bill or the other. I can make some mathematical things out of that. And uh, that's what my sorry, that's what my would do, you know. And from him, also be very thrifty. You know, we're talking about back in the 70s, early 70s, when you know there was, uh, you know, your telephone bill or even your um, electricity bill or water bill. None of those things were as costly as it is now. You know, you don't build on this big long meter. But still, if we got out of one room, my ma father would make sure we switched off the light. He would mm -hmm. tell us to turn off the water while we were brushing our teeth. Yes. He would say, "Don't have the water running," you know. So all of these things just kind of made us, um, you know. Whoa. I'm not surprised then with the influence of a father like this. You made an award-winning movie on the environment. No, no, I my mean, husband it, it, did. My husband did. I produced the film. Rajiv, well, he's the director <laughs> and writer. <laughs> I just made a short film. I made this short film, not this. And I want to say that this is something that I have done with my children as well. And you know, a lot of people have told me, "Lata, just do it. Keep doing it. These are modern kids." Even my husband would be like, "Don't, don't, don't go on pressurizing them." I said, "No. If I don't do it, who's going to do that?" Absolutely. So this is I am giving them a planet without instructions. Hello, I was given this. I am giving it to them, whether they like it or not. They'll hate me today, but I don't mind. i'm just going to keep telling them that and i think that's the resilience that parents also should have because at the end of the day my dad was not you know like what i'm saying i mean there was a demon in my dad and there was an angel in my father but today when i look back i have all the good memories in fact you know i never say he's a perfect man but i have the good memories because he left them behind with me regardless of whether i like it or not so lata to just sum the, sum that up quickly and also to sum up you know what everybody else has said early influences are really important in shaping who you are but yeah. it's not just that it's also what's in our environment right and krishna you had made a comment about the difference between growing up in india uh, and with the limited exposure to art and everything and the difference that you saw in france and how it affected even ordinary people or impacted and influenced the ordinary people so um yeah. you want to yeah, tell so, us about that <laughs> yeah one something i've noticed there like even when i was studying in an id like the kind of art that i used to look up to like i, I was influenced by a lot of french artists uh and when i when i went there like there are these 18 year olds who are doing such amazing brilliant artworks and uh like and to reach you know somewhere close to that level you know it took me like some 10 years of training of like you know post nid and uh like i realized that there is a lot of art surrounding these people from a very young age and uh, i i went to I go to these museums there are young kids uh being taken by their parents teaching them about their art history and everything and so they are seeing that and even just to like walk out you know like just go out and take a walk you seeing like so much art and history like around like you know the the architecture the planning and all these things it's just uh like integration of 
like a city with the nature and i understand that a lot of uh, that those these privileges from other you know kind of play to this kind of uh, be in this kind of position but uh, i i i i mean it is reflected on the the kind of art they do uh, the the kind of they do age there i mean even to the, the the kind of training that we got at nid uh, in the first year it's the kind of things that i could have learned in fifth standard you know and like that something in schools uh, they can incorporate and we have like a, a art slash i mean drawing slash music slash dance slash you know whatever whatever like this big list of things categories clubbed into like one uh, option like that you can take like one option you can comprise to like 20 minutes of one whole week and you know we of those things like is a world so right? and that's the kind of priority we give here so i, <laughs> I feel yeah <laughs> Uh, there's not um, enough influence that somebody can have, uh, even if they want to. Yeah, at a, at a young age. Lakshmi, you are a designer, and you worked uh, in San Francisco for a while, and you also showed at uh, the New York uh, Fashion uh, Week Me? at one time. Yeah. And um, your training in design has helped you to create a lot of the products you do now, which is. the pen uh, the paper pen with the seed mm-hmm. embedded in it and the yeah. shire which uh, is made from uh, waste from pp kits and all of that so there's a lot of design thought that goes into this and it comes with uh, exposure again right to arts and things like that so would you think it would be fair to say that if not everybody is privileged to have parents like you who encourage you to go outside of the norm as all of you have had somewhere a museum or exposure to art can take the place of this of uh, yeah. you know the parents giving you exposure to some extent absolutely mahita like we discussed the other day you know uh, when i discussed to people about the importance of art they say we can easily live without art i said you know what about the cup that you hold for it a uh, bed coffee have you seen the shape of it have you seen the structure of it the art begins there the wash basin that you use the cloth that you wear you know the car that you drive everything is has art in it right so they kind of skip that main point you know how vital art is to anybody's existence so um i think that is the kind of you know message i always try to give to others don't look down upon arts you know artisans and crafters they are what makes your your life so beautiful the musicians you know the film makers everybody so um uh, i think um, i can very much relate to what letha said i think you know uh, our our fathers got uh, separated at birth or something it is so much of resemblance to you know uh, uh, what she said about her father so like uh, you know he was so keen to uh, give exposure to us in so many areas you know that really helps me to become a generalist sort of so that you know we get to find beauty in so many things and when there is a, a, a moment of crisis like you know it helps me to find or recollect all those things and connect the dots and uh, uh, bring in a solution and it's mostly design thinking that i apply in all these things you know it's a very human centric approach that we take in all those things so that is why it gets so relatable to the entire to a larger audience uh-huh. so that kind of an inculcation about what art is started at a very very young age and i was so lucky to have so many you know similar uh, people in 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 my life you know in all stages of my life so that is what literally contributed to everything that what we have been doing so just now lakshmi connected with something that anjali had remarked on earlier you were talking about in a moment of crisis you go back to art to find just now yeah. you were saying that you go back to yeah. art to find some sort of a balance and anjali yeah. had mentioned that you remember anjali about uh, this online thing and art yes. yeah so actually um, it's 
I'll tell you about it since you brought it up. Actually, you know, uh, uh, as we said, we're very lucky to be exposed to art on a lot of levels. When the Biennale came to Cochin, we suddenly saw budding graffiti artists all over, and you suddenly see art on the streets and everything like that. And then we had the major floods also. And Lakshmi played a very important part with Chekuti and things like that. And I still yes. remember going to these, uh, you know, places to yeah. where people were put together. And I attended a workshop where I was a volunteer, and it was run by the Art Outreach Society. And people were from all walks of walks of life at these relief camps. You know, some person who owned a night for bad, somebody who had never been out of their home for forty-five years, things like that. And when we gave the paper and pen, they were so excited and so giggly. Are you in any way kind of arrayed at Lavi? I don't know how to draw, but what came out of it was magnificent. And then uh, fast forward to COVID. times and i'm working online with my patients because i can't see them anymore i'm doing working from home for radio mango and i have to tell you about radio mango also how they've contributed to artists and uh, you know we uh, my friend tanya just told me the other day hey i'm doing this art outreach thing would you like to it? it's got to deal with stress so i went and i did this course online with the art outreach society and tanya is a very good friend of mine and we uh, i joined it and it was so amazing because they said in the time of stress why don't you imagine something in your mind that you love a lot that brings back happy memories and you have 6 minutes to paint it or draw it of course as i was telling mahita the first thing was you will my drawing be the best okay because that's what comes out first and then just with this sheer meditation because actually i was just thinking about what i wanted to draw on each memory that i put whether it was a vase whether it was a red piano whether it was something else the howrah bridge whatever i drew it gave me so much of pleasure and i said my god this is something we can take art to everybody radio mango had a program called natle tarum which means stars of the country and it used to be that people had to send on you know uh, record something and send it to the office and then we had preliminary rounds and everything like that and somebody was chosen then we came out with really amazing concepts where we said okay these are people who can come to or got facilities we had three modes of natlataram one was patavandi that means there was a full van that was taken around the city and parked and people got into it and sang then we had part vanji where a vallam a boat was converted into a recording booth and it was going across the waters and people would get on to that and record their song then we had part tumbi which was a helicopter that went <laughs> off with this whole recording device and it went to all kinds of places and what happened was people was were able to liberate themselves because they could use something that they had they could sing they could draw they could talk about it and that whole concept of verum paata karti i've heard it so much oh i'm anjali amma and the paata part oh verum paata karti verum arje verum drawing alle adu namal we can all do that that's rubbish it just somebody who says they don't need art in their life my god just that doodling the stress the psychotherapist i was speaking to the other day said when you have acute stress just doodle the uh, tarot card reader who was reading my cards for me the other day she told me she said anjali when you are stressed out sweetie just take a pen and doodle it's therapeutic art is so important i want children to draw on their walls i want them to be able to make a mess because later on in life when they look back at the photographs their parents have taken though they got put tight wraps also on their face for drawing on it will make them believe that freedom of expression starts here it does it really does and you know so the i have since we have barely 10 minutes i'm just going to rush into the neg- the last part of what we're saying which is about museums uh, you know traditionally the stage one if you could say of museum was you go to a place which is not very interactive you look at things and you come you know you come away and the stage two is when the museums came out to public spaces like the jaihe museum and the cochin airport where you know it is in a space that is accessible by a lot of people and it's a very subconscious kind of influence on us as we pass through that space and uh, then there is a stage 3 and krishna you'd mentioned something you're saying yes we need to take museums to the grassroots level but how are we going to do this this was something that you had said and uh, lata you had also mentioned something interesting that there was a lot that you had to contribute but how were you going to take it to people so there seems to be this general consensus among everybody that yes museums need to come to the stage 3 where it's taken to the grassroots 
but how are we going to do this? Now, all of you have worked with education. All of you have worked with technology. You've worked with so many different things. I'm going to leave this last bit open to you know any of you who would like to share the stage and contribute your ideas as to how digital museums, especially us being in a stage now where everything is going online, it seems to me like we're in a good place. How are we going to use this opportunity to bring traditional art education, museums, all of that to children everywhere? I'm just going to leave it open to you, please. Whoever wants to jump in with an answer, Lakshmi, go ahead, and then you can you know, pass it on to someone else, and we will listen to all of you share your ideas. Uh, I could I could re very much relate to this uh, situation because recently we got selected our seat pen and the Shaya got featured in the London Design Biennale that is happening mm -hmm. now. So they had shared us all the pictures and the beautiful videos and everything. And I had been sharing it with the school students. I work with a, a school in the neighborhood, a, a local school. So the kind of excitement, those are things that they couldn't even comprehend, you know, uh, how can even think about something like this and the way it has been interpreted, you know, and how we can connect to our daily life, certain interpretations and things like that. Even, you know, the the Binale, after watching, the attending the Binale, it completely changed my perspective of seeing things. In now, whatever I see, I see it as an installation. And I can instantly, instantly give my own interpretation to whatever I see, you know, and connect it to something very relevant. Um, so um, right now, I'm also a volunteer uh, for a, a platform called Creative Dignity. It's a pan-India uh, platform that we have provided mainly to uplift the support the artisan community who have taken the most, you know, worst toll during this pandemic. So what we are trying to do is, you know, we are trying to document the, the every single art and craft in our country. So every state, we have a team of volunteers who are working on it. Uh, volunteers from NID, interns from NID, and I have all major design schools. So we are teaching the um, the artisans, you know, to how to document their work. Yeah. So they are given a smartphone, and you know, I mean, most of the children have one now with the smart classes and everything. So uh, we tell tell them how to how to place the product. If you're going to take a picture of a, a bed spread, how you have to you know sort of dress it up the bed, how to where to place the light and everything. So now they are becoming pros in you know really documenting all these uh, the art and artifacts. So I think gradually we are moving towards something where, you know, every single piece can be displayed online and everybody can have a, have a you know, seamless uh, access to all these. Definitely it will bring, act, and I think, art and craft to, to all the sections of the society like we all dream it to happen. Yeah. Anybody else would like yeah. to take on from what Lakshmi yes. said and add to this? Yeah, Mahita. So because I have worked with Radio Mango and I saw how we took uh, the studios to the people who lived in villages. I truly believe, like how we used to have the bioscope, remember when we were children, mm -hmm. you could just see the entire world. So I'm just thinking about the excitement of a van that is going in and it has got some real life paintings there. And then of course, there is this entire vision of people who don't have smartphones. Most of rural India does not have some access to, you know, smartphones or tablets or something. So imagine a car or, a you know, somebody just driving in with this, beautifully painted bus or truck and you go there and you actually look at art and see how it is done and then you give you dole it out to people you give them paints you give them crayons you tell them that this is how it is like in the Bombay airport there's that whole area where there's this yoga thing happening okay yes. uh, yeah now suddenly many people are looking at it and they're like also trying in the middle of their boredom of flights I like the flights getting delayed in all these beautiful airports because you're going to try it at one point you're going to try doing that you're going to stand in front of that Kathakali art even today in Kochi airport how many times have I flown out of it till today when I go there I want to take a photograph with the Kathakali dancer why because that's what it does it excites you art excites you so I really want to be able to provide a dialysis van that can go anywhere for dialysis so nobody has to go for it and along with that I want to provide a platform where people can see art see it and believe in it and you know just be able to I can can you imagine it's like the first time a child sees something you know something they've not been mm -hmm. exposed to and we privileged people should be able to take a little iPad and say if you're interested ba, come sit with me we'll show you what it's about I think we can and we must definitely we must uh, Krishna or uh, Lata do you have anything to add to that we have about three or four yeah. minutes left I, so I'm happy to listen to whoever has something to contribute to it would you no, like to go? go ahead. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I personally feel like any uh, 
any medium any way of getting art out there to general public is good so online uh, platform is like definitely a good way uh, to you know like get it out there but like it definitely can't uh, be a substitute for the physical museum mm-hmm. so like like something like uh, anjali was saying uh, i was thinking like there used to be these scholastic uh, uh, what is it the book fairs that used to happen right. in our schools oh, oh, yeah. something like that you know like there's a traveling art uh, or any kind of uh, you know like museum that comes to the school you know like you can experience that and leave and like it's uh, like similarly like you know in in um, benale also there are these rooms right like sometimes yes, in these absolutely. spaces where you just enter and like you know it's just an experience and you just experience it and leave and you know like things like that can be probably done i don't know and we have the technology right to of make course. all this happen we have it it yeah. just needs a vision and the will power to make it happen lakta shall we end with something that you have to add to this and then we'll open it for question and answer for questions yeah um i used to work with dakshin chitra for a year back in 2005 and uh-huh. that's just uh, it's a live you know um, museum and uh, it's all you know based on the south indian architecture art craft all of that and i would see the wonder with which kids would come there and you know go through the space but one thing i saw was that if you don't direct their gaze to something then it's just like you know like uh, like we have a saying in malayalam the dog goes to the what do you call it market it's just like that i mean so you know we really need to focus children's attention we need to grab their attention and we have so many devices with which we can grab and one of the things i'm doing currently because i'm working with lokame tarawat which is actually part of the kochi uh, mizaris binale uh, foundation they're doing a massive exhibition in uh, alapi of uh, almost yeah. 270 artists and over 4000 uh, you know works of art and i was with them for a month in april and i had to rush back because of the lockdown and uh, what really i mean for me of course and for people i know and all of you there's no need to explain anything about art but so many people i saw who came through and always i've been seeing through my life uh, is that the cluelessness with which they look because initially what happens is that they told that art is something you know beyond okay. it's something outside no way anyone like you react to music you can react to art you can react to anything around you you know and we should be, we should give students young people older people the freedom to say what they feel and what they think about art and um, i you know with logam mein tarwat i've actually taken one big huge uh, shed which they call the sheds because we've got some 5 to 6 to 8 massive uh, go down which they've converted to galleries so one of them i've taken and i've made a quiz i do that i make quizzes for kids i used to do that here in trivandrum at the sri chitra art gallery take mm. the children and at the end of it the kids are like ma'am we saw this we saw that you know the excitement was so palpable and at the same time there were so many other kids who come also with their parents or with their school and they just go away like oh let's just go get an ice cream or something we want to go home or we want to use the toilet or something but these children were like ma'am did we get this right is this right is this good you know have we got the right answer are we looking at the right thing so i mean children of any age and even adults i think even us we get so excited when there's something that challenges us So how do we incorporate all this into our current educational system um, of course as an art teacher as an art and drama teacher i had to single handedly from scratch create a uh, syllabus for both you know the igcse program i was teaching at the international school in trivandrum for the igcse program from kindergarten up to class 9 i had to single handedly develop a curriculum because none of those children there have seen art none of them knew anything about art and it was a challenge and it was a challenge i and i think yeah you need to have teachers who are passionate about their subject passionate about the children see now um lata i'm sorry i'm just going to cut in with a question and this is for all of you 
Now, when we talk about digital festivals and digital museums, we have Sarmaya, which is in Bombay, based out of Bombay. And then, of course, Agosham, which we are all part of now. And we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, and these are things which are accessible to the youth everywhere. So um, it's great that it's making an impact. What do you think about this? You know, you're also part of it. What do you think about this? And how can we expand this so that um, festivals like Agosham are there more often with you know, happening more often, open to more people? What do you think about this? You know, Mahita, I think we go back a little bit because when we started saying, you know, it's like the hand that rocks the cradle. It all, it all starts with the women at home. Okay, if your mother uh, does not approve of certain things, and I feel all these things, like suppose you've tagged me on Facebook about this. So a lot of people who are on my Facebook account who will be, you know, like, okay, let's see what Anjali is up to. Like that, I feel influential women, like even if it's just a joke or whatever they think it's a Gelf Malayali or the nurse or whatever it is, or women, so many women I know who are working, okay, in art forms and things like that. Uh, whether it's all my women in co coaching, they're all like CEOs and doctors and things like that. When something like this, they're interested in something like this and it goes on to Facebook and you're tagged in it, you are exposing somebody to something you would have not associated them with. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and then suddenly you see an uh, ophthalmologist like Natasha doing some beautiful gardening or putting up a painting or Suchitra doing something else other than linen or say, you know, Lakshmi and uh, Lata and you and Krishna, it's expected of us to have something to do with art. But I truly, truly believe the more uh, you are exposed. I don't know what it is, but it's there and you cannot deny it. I think the common thread in what all of us have been saying is that if you have to love something, you have to know about it. And only if you love something, you're going to care for it and protect it and make sure that it is carried on for another generation or generation to come ahead. And festivals like Agosham, the efforts that um, museums, airport museums like Jehe, the Cochin Airport, the Sarmaya, all of these are doing is helping people to know. So once they know, they can love and then they can take it on forward. Yes, and uh, with that, yeah, I think we'll protect. open it to questions. Sorry, Lakshmi, you were saying they, something. They, they tend to protect also, you know, yes. our rich heritage and culture. Unless they know about it, they don't even have the feeling for it. Exactly. We need many more digital festivals like this. And yes. uh, it was wonderful listening to all of you. And I wish we had an hour with each of you, but we don't. So we're going to open it to audience questions. Savita, will you yeah. Um, take I will. one? Yeah. So there's a question here. It says, listening to the panelists, what comes across is the similarity in upbringing, the exposure to culture, art, and nature, which could be common to any place in the country. Uh, what the question really is, is how much does Kerala as a region contribute to what you are doing or who you are? I, I get that, you know, I think it's it's been all of y'all come from that space where you have had the home influence playing a big role. So there hasn't been that challenge of, you know, actually being the rebel in the family and doing art. Uh, so I think that's quite interesting, actually. How much does Kerala as a region contribute to what you are doing and who you are? So Anjali, Kerala, would you want to take that? Yeah. Kerala yeah. is a platform which people just think about. I don't know what people think about Kerala, you know. It's like how people think about India. They think about poverty, sadhu, some floods and all of that. I mean, come on. I work in an office where twenty, more than 20 people or more than... Half the people there are below my age, are like 20 years old, old enough to be my kids, 22, 24. They're all ages. Most of them are girls. They're working in the marketing department, technical department. Uh, Kerala contributes to so much of, I can't tell you, opportunities. And, bec and because of that, and I think because the whole psyche has changed or is changing continuously, and we've been put into situations where we just had to put our hand out and the next one came and caught it, like during the floods or things like that. I, feel, I really believe that Kerala is a place where people can really grow. 
write something so wonderful about just being hey where is kerala on the map of india oh god's own country no it's so nice to be part of something like cochin which was just a one house town and now is nearly a big fat metro city okay it has grown only because it is it has given rise to opportunities for people like lakshmi and me and so many others to survive and all the kids who work with media now whether in radio mango or not have all come from families that have probably never been exposed to art or said ayyo eda ni radio jockey avan poano that means like uh, you're going to become a radio jockey they don't have been some people have never even heard of the word but they all live and the amount of artists that have come out the um, kind of things people do in kerala oh my god we're much more than just you know lake letters and liquor and latex and stuff like that we are an amazing community of amazing people from all walks of life in fact a marwadi a Mal- sardar ji everybody who lives in kerala they say we are tani malayali that's what it is malayali is a kerala is a feeling and yeah. once it gets on to you the only way you can go is up upward and onward <laughs> that's an this amazing is, thing that's this is an, again uh, an interesting question and one that <laughs> i personally <laughs> interested in if uh, i may add to it yeah uh, yeah sure lakshmi the fact that you know of all the states in india uh, binale had to happen in kerala so that sums it up right okay. we are so open to you know that kind of uh, extra extravaganza and the openness which we embrace new things and everything see <laughs> Yeah, I was waiting for that. <laughs> okay, okay, so Pinale so, happened Kerala. in Delhi. In fact, the Pinale happened in Delhi years and years ago, back in the 70s. But it didn't run, it, you know, it just ran out. It didn't run its course. So right. we had a run out of steam, yes. yes. So Pinale right? started in 2012. And they're still yeah. fighting against all odds to bring it up again. Because it should have happened, you know, last year. I mean, this 20, 2020. But it didn't happen because of the... Uh, covid lockdown okay. but they're not stopping they are continuing to work you know hoping to bring it out this year so yeah so have they been down here you know to send it anywhere uh, <laughs> uh this is a question that i'm personally also very keen on it says uh, how can you influence corporates to invest in art education even when 9 out of 10 times it's not profitable for a corporate and uh, this is important because i realize most of the time art education stumbles because of lack of funding you know you de- you don't get the money when you need it to come in and that can be quite uh, uh, detrimental to the cause uh, how do you actually can influence this kind of investment yeah la- la- lata um um more than the investment i think the uh, art should be in you know it should be taught right from your primary level and it really doesn't take any money to teach a child to look and to observe i you know observation is free and so is the uh, so are the tools that you use for observation and so at the csr level it should be for people to actually help these kids travel to travel and see things even if it's a little thing like just traveling to the beach and just seeing this because a lot of government schools are not able to do that because things are so expensive and the you know uh, i've had experience with government schools which have been extremely tragic and i've been ousted we, my group a little group of us worked with them and we've been ousted from the government school because we did raise our voices against the way in which you know you know things were taught there so i just think that basically it should be a part of the curriculum as important as science as important as mathematics art is very important because it just helps a child to think laterally Differently, and if yeah. you don't have it the child is just going to get caught in this web of not being able to come out because art really enhances your critical thinking and uh, even something as simple as sorry no no uh, sorry, yeah. no, no, yeah. no even something as simple as uh, like just showing a short film once in a while to the kids and then you know like just make them talk about it this you know this is just yeah. like going to make them start talking uh, analyzing uh, these things and you know like you these kids are going to surprise themselves you know like with the kind of things they come might up with. Yeah. connect and come up with and yeah. so, you know uh, sorry are you done krishna sorry i just yeah, yeah go ahead go ahead no like even in our school over here in coaching choice school and uh, you know the other schools that are here global they don't have art stroke this stroke that they have things like talent time 
literally where everybody has to come out and cook everybody has to do a flower arrangement whether you're boy or girl everybody has to draw and then they have like a really great fair and you come and buy your children thing another thing i realize why art has taken such a beating is because we are to blame we made it such an exclusive up market i own art kind of feeling and everything got so oh jaded that now the poor person thinks of oh, art is only about that how do you help mm-hmm. so during the pandemic my staff who works with me alice and shirley shirley's nephew works a full time job but he's interested in converting bottles into beautiful things so i gave him a whole lot of bottles because of course in kerala we have tons of them lying in the house <laughs> out of nice kudi but yeah gave them all the bottles he's turned it out into magnificent pieces of art my maid's daughter alice's daughter she asked me for some craft paper i gave it to her she made me a beautiful frame which i'm going to send to you all so that you all can share it on your platforms and it did cost me money to give them those things but i've enhanced them there because now they've got the confidence that they can sell these things and people will buy it so i think we have to get off people at our level in society have to get off our high horses and make art available to people and it has to be a people's thing and i think eventually every company will see that you know it is a great investment because not only are you encouraging people to see things differently it will also go into a therapeutic value towards the company help them to beat stress because the the paybacks from it are just seamless and endless i think on that note uh, if tejal is here i would uh, tejal uh, is part of the jehe museum a very a uh, key member of the museum and the one who's made our goshum possible at uh, this level uh, if she's here i would like her to say a few words i hope she is uh, no unfortunately i think I saw she her. has yeah tejal you know yes Hi. she had come in yes take over okay. this is yours Yeah. Hi. Minutes first of yeah. all uh, I've been so absorbed in enjoying this conversation so I almost forgot that you know what were we here for and I was really wishing actually muted We can't hear you Tejal Um Savita Tejal's audio seems to have been cut off. You need to uh, maybe at the host level you need to let me. No, no. Now you are fine. Audible yeah. now. You're okay now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I was just saying I was so absorbed in the conversation and I was hoping that all of us are sitting together at T two by this big art wall sharing. that invitation is absolutely standing and uh, that is one of the things which i wanted i'm here to invite you all that whenever you pass by t2 uh, it will be absolutely our pleasure to actually take you around and tell you some stories about jaihe museum uh, but this conversation has been absolutely fabulous first i want to of course again gone again tejal again she seems to have been cut off her audio seems to have been cut off again yeah. she became speechless maybe others need to unmute and only yeah, now it's cut now it's okay no no now it's okay now you can tell it oh it's streaming in and out okay yeah. So anyway, I wanted to thank you all for being, uh, you know, on Agosham, and I wanted to thank uh, Savita for bringing them together, and uh, you know, Mahita for conducting such a wonderful conversation. The most important thing I want to really actually say is that we were talking about stereotypes of, say, Malayali or Kerala, but to me, this conversation, what you all have done is. broken the stereotype of what art and museum is you know and you have actually brought out that uh, what is the function of art art as you know all of you said you know i think uh, lakshmi said it's everywhere it's in nature you know you all said that you know art the inheritance has to be kind of preserved and taken forward you know art is therapeutic you know art has to be in public spaces the way krishna says that whatever you have you know how we can actually look at it differently and use it you know to kind of make ourselves better people or be, become more inclusive 
actually this whole conversation i would like to say you all have actually articulated vision mission of jai hind museum you know as you know the <laughs> jai hind museum is in public art space you know and this was the vision that you know the inheritance and the heritage of india which is so diverse with art i mean you know, and i think that encounter kind of realigns and changes the way you think so on that note i would like to say that you all are actually torch bearers that kind of spark is there in so many people to believe in what they believe and art is that connecting thread which is there in everyone and that is what at jai he we like to believe and that is why agosham and that is why we are doing what we are doing despite pandemic despite whatever because that is what is actually you know our what shall i say inherent quality in each one of us and i agree what anjali says that it's not like that high brow thing you know we need to break away from all of that so having said that i really thank you on behalf of jai hind museum uh, for being with us it was an absolutely fabulous uh, you know conversation thank you mahita thank you savita savita has been helping us all through the month and i would like to take this opportunity to thank jai hind museum team who is sitting behind and also working you know before this entire uh, you know agosham started before and during and of course uh, you know the most importantly the airport authorities allowing us to do this and our hod ms rekha nair who is from kerala i don't know whether she's here on the platform hey, hey. But, yeah <laughs> she is currently constantly inspiring us and supporting us to kind of you know go out there and reach out uh, to one and all uh, so thank you very much and hoping to see you all at t2 at Uh, Jai Hind Museum very soon. Bye. Thank you, Tejal. We Thank want you. to see more of the same replicated in other airports all over. That would be yeah. brilliant. <laughs> Actually, you know, Mahita, I just wanted to say the reason why we didn't have to talk about breaking out of stereotypes is because actually Kerala is seen as a stereotype state from outside. Yes. We are not. The way, we we can only become. We can only talk like this because it's conducive to all of us to talk like this. And so many different backgrounds we come from. But yeah, I think you need to come to Kerala now and have some nice chewed kapi and chai and kadi <laughs> with all of us. <laughs> Thank you, all of you, for all the time that you gave and for putting up with all my questions for hours on the phone. I'm so glad. it's come together i think in a very like tejal said in a conversation that touched upon so many things that are important to museums to art and to bringing this to the general public in a much wider way thank you all so much and so all, you want to conclude yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you so much mahita for taking this thank you tejal for being here today that means a lot uh thank you each one of you anjali krishna lakshmi lata i know i have i've been on your case for a while now you know pestering you all with whatsapp and phone and everything but what i'm really really glad about is that uh, we've had a lot of meaningful conversation and i hope that people listening in uh, not just now but even to the youtube link later will actually when the next time they ask what comes to your mind when you say malayali they go to have so much to say we could run another agosham there so thank you so much for being here thank you for continuing to break the stereotypes our uh, best wishes to all of you in whatever you do thank you so much for being here thank with you thank you so thank much you. for having us thank here. you okay. bye 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 everyone and thank bye. you to all of you who have come on i can see some familiar faces also so it's very nice that you're all here it's really made it's such a beautiful feeling really honestly Hope to meet you all in person soon Yes, hoping to do that. Thank you, thank you. Really. Thank you. You know, I have to tell you. I mean, whether it, we have time or not, quickly. There's this girl called Sejal Jobana Putra who's actually online watching here, and uh, she's a kidney patient who lost her hearing to oh. medicines. But when I told her about this art thing, she was so excited, and I have been messaging her nonstop actually, and telling her what we're talking. 
and she's so excited she says anjali i'm getting goosebumps and i can't wait to see you and go into t2 now okay <laughs> we are all there for her and for everyone and we hope that this actually kind of blossoms and flowers into you know what all of us have the vision that art is for everyone i think that is the biggest thing and art should be just every day and close to earth as you know lakshmi says and that's what it kind of anchors us and in the time of difficulties especially what we are going through now i mean we don't have to categorize as therapy but it's like you know art is what kind of heals so i think that is fantastic thank you so much yeah thank, thank you. you thank bye. you bye 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 you were saying bye. something sabita no no i was just saying you know we're talking about uh, making art universal and approach you know accessible to all parts of agosham are actually uh, done for the bmc school students like the storytelling sessions and craft sessions on zoom so you know using things that are easily available at home uh, we do have shalain pimenta who is our official storyteller she would do a story on kerala and do a craft you know help them build something so it's um, agosham is not just for those who have access to instagram and you know facebook yeah. and are uh, fluent in the language shalain does this in hindi uh, and marathi sometimes uh, but yes agosham is accessible even to students of the bmc schools and we're hoping that uh, you know we can probably find plugins into their curriculum so they learn more about different cultures without having to leave the confines of their classroom so yes uh, that is a very very important step yeah, in taking yeah. in making this meaningful to integrate yes. it with their curriculum right right i think yes. actually um Savita, I can actually help you with uh, what do you call it? Uh, integrating art into their curriculum. That yes, yeah. Yes, that's the conversation. Yeah, you're on board already. You said it. <laughs> yeah, she's on board. I, I've already uh, <laughs> told you about this, so yes, I haven't forgotten. But thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Thank really, you. Uh, totally our pleasure. And anything you need, if I could do for you on any platform. i'm ready to do it absolutely thank you so much anjali thank you thank, thank you lakshmi you. thank you lata bye thanks mahita thanks tejal okay. bye lata bye, bye. bye.